Hi, if you're loading your millions of records in the data grid view, it can take a few seconds or even minutes to load. That's why it's crucial to have a loading screen with GIF and progress bar. This makes it visually appealing and informs your users about the data loading process, letting them know how long they need to wait. If you want to know how to add a loading screen with GIF and progress bar to your project like what I showed you, I will teach you step by step. Make sure to watch this video until the end and don't skip any parts so you won't miss anything. But before we start, welcome to Kadev Tips, your ultimate destination for programming tutorials and all things code related. If you're passionate about learning to code or improving your programming skills, you're in the right place. But before we dive into today's programming tutorial, I'd like to invite you to become a part of our growing community. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll gain access to a wealth of programming knowledge and stay updated with the latest tutorials we release. So, go ahead and subscribe now, and let's get coding. First, we need to create a new project. To do this, click on File, then New, and select Project. Under Visual C Sharp, click Windows, and then choose Windows Forms Application. At the bottom, enter a name for your project. Make sure it's relevant to what you're working on. Once done, click OK. Now, adjust the size of the form to fit your design needs. You can do this by clicking and dragging the edges of the form. Next, add a button to the form. Go to the toolbox, drag a button onto your form, and then go to the Properties window. Change the text of the button to load records. After that, add a data grid view to your form. Drag it from the toolbox onto your form and adjust its size to fit your layout. Now, add a background worder to your form. You can find it in the toot box. This will help manage your loading screen process. Next, click on the form itself. Go to Properties window and change the start position property to center screen. This ensures that your form appears in the middle of the screen when it loads. Make sure to save all your changes by pressing Ctrl plus S. Next, create a new Windows form for the loading screen. In the Solution Explorer, right click on your project name. Select Add, and then click on Windows form. On the left side, Click Visual C Sharp Items, then Windows Form. Change the name of the new form to Loading Screen, and click Add. Adjust the form to the desired size by dragging the edges. Next, go to the Properties window and change the Form Border Style property to None. This removes the border from the form. Change the Back Color property to White or any color you prefer for your loading screen. Change the Start Position property to Center Screen, so that the form opens in the center of the screen. Next, add a picture box to the form. Drag it onto the form and position it as needed. In the Properties window, change the Size Mode property to Stretch Image, to ensure the image scales properly. Next, add an image to the picture box. To do this, click on the image property, double click on it, then click import button. Select the GIF file you want to use, and then click OK. Now, add a label to the form. Change the text property of the label to loading, please wait. Add a progress bar to the form, and adjust its size to fit your design. In the Properties window, change the style property of the progress bar to continuous. This will give it a smooth filling effect. Next, let's add code to our loading screen. Double click on the form to open the code editor. We will add a new public method called update progress with an integer parameter named progress. This method will help us update the progress bar. Inside the update progress method, 
Add the following code. Progress bar 1. Dot value. Equals progress. This line sets the value of the progress bar to the current progress. We're now done with the loading screen setup. Let's go back to the main form to integrate this with the rest of our application. Double click on the main form to open its code editor. At the top of the code file, add the following using directive. Using system.data.sql client. This line allows us to use SQL client for database operations. Next, we'll declare some variables. Add these lines of code. Declares a variable to hold our loading screen form. Private loading screen loading. Declares a variable for the background worker, which will handle our asynchronous tasks. Private background worker background worker. Dataset DS equals new dataset. Now, declare a method called initialize background worker. This method will set up our background worker. Inside the initialize background worker method, add the following code. You can pause the video here to copy the code. Please note, you might see an error line in the background worker. Don't worry about it for now. We will fix it later. Now, call the initialize background worker method inside the form1 constructor under the initialize component method. This will set up our background worker when the form is initialized. Next, go back to the main form and double click on the load records button. Inside the buttons event, write the following code. Loading equals new, loading screen. Loading dot show. Background worker dot run worker async. These lines of code ensure that when the load records button is clicked, the loading screen will appear, and the background worker will start processing the data. Next, go back to the main form again. Click the background worker object, and then go to the properties window. Click the events icon, which looks like a lightning bolt, to view the list of events. Double click on the do work event to generate an event handler. Inside the background worker do work event, write the following code. First, create a variable for our SQL connection string. This string will contain the necessary information to connect your database. Next, create a variable to store the total rows count of the data from the database. Use query, select count asterisk from sales to get the total number of rows in the sales table. Then, create a variable for SQL select statement. Use, select asterisk from sales, to retrieve all data from the sales table. Note, in this example, I'm using the ABC underscore store database in the sales table. Make sure to change these values to match the database and table you are using. Next, write the following code. You can pause the video here to copy it. This code is used to fetch data from the database in chunks and report the progress back to the background worker. This approach ensures that your application remains responsive while loading large datasets. After that, go back to the main form again. Click the background worker object. Go to properties window, click the events icon, and now double click on the process changed event. Inside the background worker progress changed event, write the following code. Loading dot update progress e dot progress percentage. This line of code updates the progress bar on the loading screen with the current progress percentage. Go back to the main form again, and now double click on the run worker completed event and write this code. Data grid view one. Dot data source equals ds dot tables. This line set the data source of the data grid view. Loading dot close. This line closes the loading screen once the background worker has completed its task. Now we're done. Run the program to see the results. 
Click the Load Records button. And that's how it's done. We've successfully created a loading screen with AGIF and a progress bar in C-sharp. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos.